Hi everyone, this is part two for the shortcut binding tool. I'm Jody Barrows with the Square on the Square and this is my friend Kay Roberts with the shortcut binding tool. And our class today has been on how to put professional binding on your quilt and to do it in a very fast, fun, fabulous way to get your quilt finished. So in this part, on this part two of the video, we actually have a large quilt that is ready for its binding. We need to get it trimmed up and get it uh, prepped and ready to go. So, um, Kay, let's go ahead and look down here at our quilt. You can see okay. the quilt is all finished. You have the top, you have the batting, and then you have the backing. And when you put the three layers together, that's actually called the sandwiching of the quilt. And then you do this beautiful stitching, and that quilts all three layers together. So the next step is the last step to finish the quilt, and that is the binding. binding. But first of all, we have to get this all trimmed up to get it to look nice before we can start putting our binding on. So let's talk about how we do that. Well, what you want to do is you want to have a nice area. Don't get a little squatty yeah. as area. As big as you can get. But as big as you possibly can get because you want to be able to uh, spread it out, kind of make sure it's all flat. And then I've got an edge here, right? Here is a seam. So I'll pick up a ruler and I'll put it on here. And this looks like, from what I'm seeing, is I can find my five inch mark here. So my five inch line is going right on top of that seam. And it's not that it has to be five inches. No. It, what we're wanting to do is to get this last border to get a consistent width from the last seam. Because if you just start trimming along the edge, your border can be crooked. It could be wider down here, skinny or up there. Your corner could not have a nice a sharp corner on it. Right. So basically what you're doing is just finding a line, a line. on mm -hmm. a ruler, putting it on the seam, and making sure it's the best distance from the seam to the edge to be consistent with your cut. Right. Okay. And if you need to tug on your quilt just a little just bit, gently smooth just out. gently smooth it out to make sure that that five inch is going right on that seam. And then a lot of times, you know, I will, I will start Make sure, you know, if this, you have a new blade. Always have a new Always blade. Always have a new blade, you know, to start this. So I'm just going to... I do that this, too. Just kind of... That so I don't have to mess with that. Pack it. Now, we're getting up here to a corner. So I stop there a little bit. We're going to pull this back down. And again, I'm going to find my five inches this way. And then five inches across. And where those two five inches meet should meet right there in that corner. So you're right making here. sure the distance from here and the distance from here Are that you same. have enough. And yes. That, you, that it's the same. The same. Mm -hmm. And you can see how this is, it has a tendency to creep out yeah. just a little bit. And that's just from the quilting it's just and from, the handling yeah. of the fabric and it, and it going around. And you come and you do that. You get your nice corner, half off what you don't need. Yep. And, and then, then you're turn. just going to turn it. And once we kind of get it turned... Try, don't get your quilt underneath of it. Yeah, make sure there's nothing under there's it. There's nothing under it. I'm going to spread it back out again. Then I'm going to come back. Let's make sure we've got it. And see, and I've got my, I've started there. So I'd like to come back. Line up my five inches. And I like my ruler to come down from where I've cut before. That's going to help me give my straight edge. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't start right where you stop cutting. Come down three yeah. or four inches. If you've ever been to a quilt show and you see a quilt hanging or in a shop or wherever it may be hanging at, and it kind of ripples and bubbles as it gets to the bottom, part of it can be handled in this process. Right. Of course, some of it is that it's really bad. Things happened up in here right. that made that. But a lot of it is just this finishing and the squaring of the quilt. Right. Yeah. Right. So you would just continue to I just continue all doing it all sides. on all four sides. Okay. And then we'll be ready to put our binding. Okay. So we have our quilt trimmed up. Now we're ready to make our binding. So let's see what our first step is, Kay. Okay. So we're going to use our shortcut binding tool. And what we want to do is we want to cut a flange fabric and our binding fabric. And that flange, I like to use a tone on tone or a solid to make it pop. If you have a color in your quilt, 
one color that you haven't used a lot of, maybe use that one, and that's going to make that binding really pop out. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So what I do is I take my ruler, and you have your fabric, and I cut my flange the crosswise of the grain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the width. I don't like to cut full straight pieces mm -hmm. like that, so I usually just always fold my fabrics in half, make sure there's no bumps, and then I put my ruler on here, the one and three-fourths, the black is on top of my fabric like you should always have, and then I cut. Mm -hmm. And I would cut however many I need for my quilt to go around the entire thing. So we have that. Now the next one is your binding. You can do your binding on the straight of grain or on the bias. Everybody has their preference. I was taught many years ago to do it on the bias. It just makes your quilt wear better. Mm -hmm. And it gives it a, I just like the way it pulls over a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It has a little more it, give to it. Yeah, it so. does. And it really makes it nice. So when you're doing that, you know, what a bias is, if you don't know what it is, if you've got a square piece of fabric, all you do is just fold that piece of fabric in half at a diagonal. Mm -hmm. And this gives your bias. And you can always tell a bias if you stretch it. It's real stretchy. Mm -hmm. So with that, you're going to come over to your next measurement, which is the one and three eighths. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cut all of those. And I think it's easy for me to remember that the little flange is your wider and your binding is the skinnier. It's kind of right. opposite. It's opposite of what you would think it would yeah. be. It is. It is. So once that is done, you're going to come back and you're going to piece all your pieces together. You know, put these all at a diagonal like this and stitch mm -hmm. from that little insert down to the other insert mm -hmm. and stitch yeah. those. And then show them how that opens up for, the, for our newbies. That so when that gets open, then it's just like our It has your seam at a diagonal instead yep. of straight. Therefore, it continues to be smooth and not all bumpy, bumpy. all in one area. Right, mm -hmm. right. And you're going to do the same thing then for your for your flange. Mm -hmm. You're going to put them together. Uh, one, you'll have one like this. Yes. And then you're going to take your other and lay it like that. Yes. And then sew diagonally. Mm -hmm. And, and people then, who are familiar with my videos, if they go back to the Kisses setting video, we have a whole section on of this. that. So. so if you want more on that, go to the Kisses settings. Okay. So when you do that, after those two are cut, then you're going to take your binding and you're place it on top of your flange and you're going to stitch that with your quarter inch seam. Mm -hmm. And that brings us back to this. Mm -hmm. Once this is stitched, then you're going to take that and you're going to press that seam towards the binding. Okay. Once that is done, then you're going to take that and flip it over and fold it in half. And it's important to press to the binding because you don't have enough room in here for right. that. If, the, if your seam doesn't go towards your binding, when you do this, then you have a it's whole bunch real of bulky. fabric yep. in this little flange. And, and it we won't don't want lay that. the way that we want it to. No, we want it nice and flat. So that gets us to this point. So that's your binding. You're going to do it all and have it ready. I, actually, this is probably the hardest part of doing it because once this is done and sewn, mm -hmm. you can sit down and get your quilt done in about 15, 20 minutes. And I would say it's not the hardest part. It's just no, the most it's time, just most time consuming. The most time consuming. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's not hard. It's just you have three or four different steps. Yeah before you can sit down and put it over to your binding. prepped and yeah. then you're ready to roll. Right. And when I'm making a quilt, after I've pieced the quilt, I like to do my binding right then and there. And then you have it ready. And then I have it ready. And there's nothing to stop you when you get it quilted right. whether you're doing it or you get it back from back the quilter. From, yeah. It's done. You know what fabrics you mm -hmm. want and it's ready. I agree. And all your cutting stuff is out and so it's just easy just to do. Just easier to do it that okay. way. So, so are we ready to go to the machine? I think we're ready to go to the machine. And Let's go sew this on. All right. Let's go. Before we get started on the binding, I want to tell everybody that this is the Poinsettia Star pattern and it is in the Diamonds by the Square book. Uh, there's some uh, great uh, quilts in there and this is just one of them and we'll talk about it in a separate video. And here on the outside edge you can already see that beautiful binding already put down and the corners and everything just really looks nice and neat and beautiful. 
Um, I think Kay put this on uh, one side, it took about 15 minutes, the other side about 15, and she was done with it. And you can also see here this beautiful solid color and how it just makes this edging pop along the edge of the quilt. So part of it we already have done because we are in uh, TV land where you can do that. But this part, we're just beginning to get on. So Kay, show us how the, the binding is separate. Okay. You don't have it on yet. Right, here's and, the binding. And I, I'm sewing this to the back of your quilt. Remember, to the back, not to the front like we normally would. So it's sewn to the back. Your binding is face down. You have to think about this face down because it comes up and over to the front. So that's how the binding gets around to the front. So what you're going to do is remember we're sewing with that fat, kind of a fat quarter. We want it to be full in that binding. So I'm just kind of going slow. Don't be afraid to get your hands up here to guide it. The other thing I kind of want to talk about is, is having your machine down in a bed. Don't you agree? I do. I it's mean, if that's flat. the one thing you can do for mm -hmm. you, do it's it. going to put your machine down in a bed so that you have a, a nice machine bed. So you have a surface. nice flat so nothing's falling off. And you have a lot of weight here on the quilt, so yeah. you have a space here that you can lay it on so it's not pulling and dragging. Right. It's just so much better. I, I think that's a lot of people's problems. It's, it's an easy dragging. fix it for is. something that causes a lot of problems. It really is. So I'm coming up to the corner now. I'm about three inches away, and I just stop. So now what I'm going to do is I take my binding and I'm going to fold it up here at a 45 degree angle. And we were up close with the uh, sample at the beginning of our part one of our binding and we talked about how those corners just see are right nice there. And flat. You want that 45 degree angle from here to there and it's just taking it and folding it up straight. Don't uh, make sure this is straight up here. So now you've got that and if you can see that there is a crease line right here I'm going to sew right up to that crease line All right, we're going to take that and see and I'm using my stiletto To kind of hold everything into place and if you can't see that crease line mark it you know because it's better to go one stitch before the crease line then too far in and I back stitch a couple three stitches and then on this wonderful machine I have I have a scissors cut I love that you can get that on the machine it makes it so much easier then I'm just turning this around okay see if we can't get everything up here now I'm going to take this see I've stitched right here fold this up at that 45 degree angle it holds that right in place right there then I'll take this top and pull it straight back down. Now get your nose up over there so that fold at the top is not beyond your quilt. You want it right there at the edge. You want this edge straight and you want these two edges straight. See that? Those two folds there, you want those even also. You and if those edges aren't straight, it affects the way that that turns That over turns to the front. And the way things match up. Yep. And you don't want this out beyond that corner, beyond your quilt, because it gives it too much fabric. So I start about two or three stitches in. I do a back stitch, just right to the edge. Then I come forward. Just like this. And once again, a walking foot is a must and yes. very important. Um, yes, it is. When doing a binding. It is. But if I didn't have my machine in the bed, this would just be pulling off. I would be fighting it. I would be having so much trouble getting this on. It wouldn't be fun at all. It would not be fun. And that's what we want is to quilt, to be fun. It's not a chore. We're always struggling. And, and if that's just one thing that you can do to make your sewing easier, you, you've got to figure out how to do that. And, and if we're struggling, it's probably not going to turn. We're not going to be successful. It's not going to be as successful. No. Okay. So we're pretty close to where we want 
you know right here is where I started so now I'm just going to stop. I've left me a hole there. If it's not big enough, I'll just cut it back a little bit. Get this straight for you, Kay. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to pull this back around here, and I'm going to take just a couple back stitches. And then again, I'm going to use my scissors, and I'm going to cut it. So now we're ready to put our tails together. So let's go back over here to the table. Okay. And do that because I need to use the iron. And that's where I like to do it, be able so I can right. see it. Let's go right back okay. over there. One. All right, Kay. Let's show how to put these tails together. All right. So we're here, ready. I I left my space here. Like I said it doesn't make any difference. But I'm thinking this might be a little small. I got a little bit too close. But I'm going to try it. Put this one here. Put this one here. Oops. I see a seam there. And if I put this right there, I'm going to have that seam right where I want to do my tails, and yeah. that's not good. Right. So, if you have that problem, what I like to do is I just come back, and I'm just going to open this side up just a, a little, little bit, bit more, more, so I can get away from that seam. Yeah, that's a great okay. tip. And it, sometimes it happens that the joining of those fabrics come together right where you want to do this tail. Right. And, you know, I know a lot of people will take their binding and measure it and make sure all the seams don't hit where they don't supposed to hit and I yeah. I don't do that that's also too much at a time. corner you don't want those seams to hit no. at a corner no you have to go back and make a different cut mm -hmm. and restitch that binding together if, that's the best way to do if it. there's any pre part I do is try to kind of just lay the binding on and see where see it's where. at on those corners and then adjust right right so now here you can see Again, that we've left, oh, probably about an eighth of an inch right in there. You know, it's a guesstimate, mm -hmm. you know, because it depends on you, your eyes, your machines. We call those PPS, personal yep. private measurements. And that is, I yeah. tell everybody that. And because if it doesn't work quite the first time, then you've got to go back and readjust that. Mm -hmm. So now we've got that. I'm just going to cut the rest of this little tail off here. I don't, don't need, need to him. fight with it. Don't need to fight with him, and I'm even going to cut some of this little tail off because I don't need any more on here than what I need. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our tool. So I'm ready to open up. I open up my right side, and I just open it up mm -hmm. to the wrong side. Mm -hmm. And you can see right there is that crease line that I did right here. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, you're going to look at your ruler again. It says top right, crease line. If you can read right, it should be in your right hand. Mm -hmm. Then it says top, it needs to be at the top. Top of your binding. Binding. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take just your marker and we're going to mark that in. Just like that. Pick you up a pair of scissors because I don't trust myself with a rotary color cutter to bring it down. So pull out those scissors. Do that. And then at this point, then I also like to take my quarter inch and mark your seam and line. mark my seam line. Cool. Just so you know what you're doing. Just so you know what you're doing and where that seam is also helps you with that intersection. Right, right mm -hmm. there, where you want our two seams to match. So now I'm going to open up the left side. Again, just open and open. Here again, right here is that crease. Now, from my right hand, it read top right. Now I turn it over to my left hand. Now it says bottom left. Very good. Okay. Now, if from your right to your left, if you get your ruler turned upside down, you cannot read those let words. That's a good tip. You have you to be able to read it. You have to be able to read it. Very good. Or if you messed up on this side, then you have to mess up, up on, on that side. side, and the two messes <laughs> equals a right. So, so two wrongs do Two wrongs right. equals a right. <laughs> so you want to make sure you can read that. It says bottom, so you're taking your ruler to the bottom of your binding. Mm -hmm. Crease line again, come back, mark it, 
Don't cut your quilt, gals. It's easy to do. Cut right on that line. And then I come back and I take this. I've got my dash line there and I'm just marking my seam allowance. With Jody's technique, we don't have to mark anything on, so she doesn't have too many, <laughs> you know, besides That's pencils right. around. That's right. Markers. So now we have that done. Need some pins? Yeah, I might need a couple, three pins. So now I like to kind of pull this one up. So now we have this. Let's see. And the reason why we pull it up is so that it's easier right. to work with these pieces. So right there is the way it's going to look. Mm -hmm. So I just still open up both sides. Don't get anything twisted. And I just pinch both of them together. That's all you do. Then I take my pin, a P-I-N. And right there is where that is. And then come over here to this one. Just a bit. Because you're looking at those pencil I'm lines. I'm looking at those pencil lines. I want two pencil lines. It's like lining up a seam or on, you know, when you're putting your two seams together. They're going at an angle under there, so you right. got to make sure they match up. So now we've got this, and I've got a couple more. I'll use a couple more pins. I like how the ruler gives that triangle notch here. Right. So that everything lines up the way that it should, and it's, you know you're not getting that angle off. Right. Right. And don't worry if this notch doesn't match here exactly. Mm -hmm. That's just because maybe here you didn't sew the same as on that one. Yeah. You're off maybe just a mm -hmm. smidge. It's not going to hurt anything. Nobody's ever going to know. Because the most important thing is to have this your flange and right. the color change. Right. That's the most important thing. So now we're back over to the sewing machine. All right. Okay, now we're over here at the machine. We've put our two tails together. Now we're ready to sew that. So I'm getting this. And I'm going to sew it right on that line. I don't have to really kind of guess. Making sure I'm doing it right. And we just say, yes, please match. And we're just connecting this, this binding to be a continuous binding. That's right. That's how we put our the two tails together. So let's see how Kay did on this. Oh, I'm off. But for this, you can always go back and switch it or just keep going. Keep it's going. Up to you. I think I'm going to keep going. All right. Let's Is that going. all right, Jody? Sure. Let's go. We're close enough. We're close enough. We're close enough. Now, you know, I got off. I didn't match that. So, you know, that's something you have to watch. And if you want to, you can always base that seam. Now, you're going to press this seam open. A lot of times I'll just hand do that. Make sure this gets back over there. Then I'm going to start back up here. So now what we're doing is we're attaching the binding to the quilt just like we did all the way around. Right. And we're going to fill in that hole. And it's amazing how it just pops down and fits. It's amazing. Yeah. Kind of have to get your hands going. Hold your mouth just right. You know, we don't want everybody to think we're perfect, Jody. so that's kind of <laughs> why I did that. I want to make sure they know that. Well, you know, um, there was a famous Mary Kay lady that always said that if you're that, if someone's that close to notice, then they probably need their face slapped. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay. So there, it's done, and it's stitched on. So it's all the way around the quilt. Yep. We're ready to bring it over to the other side. Yep. And, and we have a corner here mm -hmm. that we're going so to we're gonna, do this to. We're going to just demo a corner for okay. you because it's all the same all the way around. We're going to do it so right flip here. flip it back to the top. Yep. Pull around to the top. Yep. Now you want to change your thread. You want your top thread to match your flange, which in this case is this little tan. And then the bobbin thread, we've just chosen to use the same cream on the back. 
since the quilting was in the cream, yeah, we just thought that we that just would left be fine. it the same. But if you really want it to kind of disappear in there, use black. I'd use black in this case, but you want to make sure it matches. So what I'm doing is, I, see, I'm giving that a little bit of tug up and over. Do you ever feel like it's necessary to go and press and bring it over? I don't. You don't? Okay. I don't. Um, you know, if you want to, people can use pins. Like I said, you can use the Those clips, clips. Mm -hmm. to hold it. Um, I've done so many of these that I can feel kind of where yes, that edge I is. Agree. I always teach in my classes, feel it. Feel it. Yeah. And that's what I do. I, I can feel that. And so now I'm ready. And what I'm doing is kind of stitching in this ditch right here on the cream, right next to the black. Pulling that over, and if you want to use your stiletto to help you, do it. Don't be afraid to get your nose down in there. Just don't stitch it because we got to be able to see what's going on. So now I'm coming up to the corner. I'm going to put the opposite side in first. Okay. And if I had a, a clip here, I would use a clip. But I've just got a pin right here, and I'm just going to put the pin in there. Got a clip over there, Jody? Yeah. All right. I really like to do the clips when I'm doing a binding instead of pins because the pins yeah. poke a lot. Right. You know, but if you have to put as many pins in, it really pokes. Right. You can get stabbed. You can well, and then you can get bloody too. Yeah. I've yeah. So see, I've turned that, and this is coming all the way up here. And it's important that it goes all the way, way. or that corner's not going right. to turn nice. You want to make sure that gets right up there. And I take my stiletto right there at the end of I my I really quilt. like the way you do that stiletto there. And then just kind of pull that out. If I have to adjust it a little bit, I can. Now, another cool thing about a stiletto at this point is, is that you can push that stiletto all the way down in those fabrics, holding it like holding a pin. It. Right. Multiple layers. So now I'm coming up. Slow down. And see how the stiletto you stitch can see right it there. Clear up in that needle. So now, you know, if you don't have it to pivot up, or you know, if you don't have your foot, you need to lift your presser foot so you can pivot. Pull this on around. I really love watching the binding. Uh, come together on a quilt because it really does just finish it in such a beautiful way. And you just take a little bit of time. Take your time. Just kind of pull it up and over. If you've got threads hanging, get out of there. And you're just going to try to stitch. Now, you'll know your machine. If you know your machine, if you get up into the uh, seam, your machine's going to ha have a different sound. Right. So you just know to get back off of that. You kind of got off on that side of the road where you hear that, where your tire's the hitting that bumble, bumble wood. <laughs> the braille. The braille, and, and um, you just need to get back down, get back on the road. And I think it's important to not go fast, you know, especially right. when you're learning. It's just, you know, go slow. Go steady. slow. Keep your hands here. Just don't stitch them, but they, they're there for a reason. And you just continue going all the way around, all the way doing around. all four corners just like that. And um, this quilt is about 70 by 70, and I think you can put I think you can put one side on in about 20 minutes and oh, yeah. the other side in 20 minutes, and that's that's just really cool. So that's that's how and you that's do it. it. Thank you, Kay. That's how you do it, and that's how you get a binding on there that looks really nice, and you get your quilts done. So go home and make some quilts and get them bound. Finish up those quilts and get Finish that binding them. on. Thanks yes. for watching, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.